that's technology. her dry before she dries okay. out on us. Okay, no doubt. With the standard of the breed, they're supposed to be higher in the loins and their back legs are actually supposed to be longer than their front legs. They're supposed to be bent at the pastern here, so you have to accentuate that. It has to come down like this and then angle forward. And they have hair feet, like rabbit feet. The two front toes are longer than the side toes. Okay. The highest point of the skull should be right over the front of the ear. The front should be wider at the top than at the bottom. So when they're standing normally, mm -hmm. their feet actually come together. Oh. But they're wider up here and they angle in. Okay. They have a rat tail. So we shave the tail into a rat shape. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do a 40 against on the tail. Okay, well, I can't wait to see. We have Amy's shears here. <laughs> I'm nervous. So we're going to unpack Amy's <laughs> shears. And they're very pretty. They are Amy. pretty. They better perform. <laughs> so as I start to scissor these guys, I use a scissoring spray. Which one are you using, darling? This is Igram Magic Mist. Okay. And I didn't use any conditioner on her after the bath because oh. I needed density to her coat. So she's getting her conditioning now. And I'm using an Utsumi comb, They're a nice. super fine tuned comb. That would make sense for this, for this coat type. Yeah, because anything will leave lines in it. Very challenging coat to, like if, if you were gonna compete with this breed like you have, it probably is, is um, one that catches the judge's eyes because they realize the difficulty factors of the coat and, and you know, depending on if the dog is, has proper confirmation. So we're all combed. I'm going to use the Artero Spectra Clipper and I'm going to start with a 10 against. I normally never go against the grain on anything. Okay. In these areas, except a Bedlington. Because it'll show? Is that why? Um, because I don't want to risk any sensitivity factors okay. on most dogs. Yeah. But Bedlingtons need the sharp lines. I go a little bit higher than the corner of the eye on okay. these guys because I like to angle up towards the top of the ear here. Okay. Because I'm going to go a little higher than the top of the ear to get that really narrow. And that's another uh -huh. thing with the breed standard. They're a slab side breed. Uh -huh. You don't have a barrel chest. They drop deep in the chest. chest. So they're supposed to have a deep chest. The underline is not supposed to go past the elbow. And they have a very high tuck up to accentuate where the, the high roach. point of the back is. Yeah. So you, okay. I shave this out completely in the tuck up here. You'll see in really? a little bit. Yeah. So you'll take that real short. Mm-hmm. Wow. This blade never gets hot, which I love. So I go to the corner of the eye. Okay. And then down to the corner of the mouth. Straight from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. Mm-hmm. And then when I get to the chin, I'm going to shave the entire chin with a 40 blade. Okay. But. So that whole bottom jaw comes off. I'll actually go to the flu with the 10 against. Okay. And then do the very front. When they do these for show, they do everything with a 40 blade. Wow. She's got a little lump there. I wonder if her parents know. Hmm? It's right in the flu. Yeah. And she's, uh, she's young for that. Mm-hmm. You want to get the flu cleaned out really good. Switch to a 40 up here. Not taking off all this, just okay. a little bit to show her lips. Okay. So now I'm using a 40 on the ears.
and I come up in a point. Mm -hmm. And I'll edge that out against the grain so it's really sharp. Okay. Right in this bulb of the ear here, I'll come back with a 10. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go with a 40 there. Wow, I may have a new favorite breed. They are amazing. I've heard that they're, they're wonderful pets. They really are. Mm -hmm. Everybody who has one never has anything else. Mm. I've always had Carrie Blues. I think Carrie Blues are beautiful. They're stunning, aren't they? Mm-hmm. This is a little too high, so I'm going to lower it. Oh. That's really, really looking awesome. Good girl. Now, this is a pet trim, guys. A pet what? trim should be a show trim, but you know, it's, if I were doing a show trim, I'd spend a lot more time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But so, one of the differences is the fact that, like you said, at different places you're using a 10 blade where they would have used a 40 on, right. on a show trim. What Stay. else would differentiate what we're doing today? Just the amount of time spent. Okay. Stay. Uh -uh. Why are you being fussy about your ears? Hmm? Say, well, they just are. They're delicate. You always go from the center of the ear out on the ears. You never go up on the ears, ever. You can cut them with a blade, for sure. I'm just following her. It's okay, I'm I following give my you. Dogs a lot I'm of following freedom. you. <laughs> I give my dogs a lot of freedom on right? the table. That's okay. And I didn't want the arm up here to get in the way of what we're trying to do. Yeah. It makes it hard to film sometimes, all the obstacles we got to film around, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Somebody wanted to know, make sure you ask Suzanne what dryer she's using. We always see it, but we're not sure what it is. It is a Shern Bayo dryer. Mm-hmm. It's about a $750 dryer, right? Uh, right around there. Yeah, I was checking this out yesterday. They make a stand dryer as well, which I have in the back back there. It's on high with heat. And if you turn it all the way down, it's mm -hmm. completely cold. So when I'm blow drying Pomeranians, a lot of times I'll turn it on cold as I'm finishing. And up on heat when it's down on air. So. And it really, really, when you turn the heat on, it's there. And it's, there's no wait time. But, for velocity for a stand dryer. Mm -hmm. I know, I was blown away. And we did sound testing. Uh, we got a decibel reader. And we did? did sound testing on the clippers, the dremels, the dryers, a With human Shurbea? hair dryer. Yeah. yeah. It was only like 79, 80 decibels. So it's really pleasant to the dogs. Whereas you know, a high velocity dryer is K93? 90 to 108. Yeah, it's very loud. So. Well, now it makes sense why you say, no, I, I use my, my fluff dryer for everything. Because that's thing, got a lot of power. That thing's got power. I don't dig yeah. way in in my toes. I just kind of skim yeah. off. All right, what are you using, a, a 30? For her, I'm using a 40. Okay. So any of you that use regular clippers, you should check your blade all the time on your arm. When she says regular clippers, she means like a detachable blade mm -hmm. clipper. This is a four, four in one or five in one? Whichever. Four in one. Adjustable blade clipper. So typically they, they are designed somehow to stay cooler. There's, there's like a little air pocket inside that shoot that the air filters through under the blade, but as well, like, like Suzanne said, it's what the blade's made out of. It just doesn't heat up as quick. Here we go on the tail. I typically do a V shape mm -hmm. about a third of the way down the tail and I use a 40 on the tail against the grain because they're supposed to have a rat tail. Mm -hmm. So basically it's supposed to look like a rat's tail, which has no hair. 
I do the <laughs> underside with a 10 or a 15, so when I go up under here, uh -huh. I don't go as short. Just to keep it from possibly being irritated on her. Mm-hmm. It's okay, girl. A lot of dogs are sensitive with their tails. Yeah. It's okay, honey. Good girl, Layla. Yeah. It's all right, precious. You're a good girl. It's okay, honey. And a 40 is actually safer than a longer blade when you're doing detail work like this. Why is that, Suzanne? Because it cuts so close and the, the cutting edge is right up to the edge there. It leaves no room for any skin to feed in. That makes sense. But the thing with a 40 blade is when we use our 40 blades, we really are hard. We're just skimming. We're, we're like no light. pressure. The touch on your clippers is very light. You're yeah. not pushing. No pressure on the blade. It's like using a pencil. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. So I'm going to go all the way down to a 10. I like to show some thigh here. Okay. Um, for the power of the rear. Kind of like on a schnauzer, like to show those muscles back there, right? Yeah, but not as far down. I okay. do this on carries and yeah, just about any of your terriers where you want to show a little bit of muscle. Even Wheatons, soft-coated Wheatons, mm -hmm. to show the, the drive in the rear. If you come down next year, maybe we can get a good Wheaton. So I clean out this whole area, including the inner thigh. Yeah. Was it a 10, you said? Yeah, I'm yeah. using a 10. It's all clean, and, and plus you're gonna scissor that together, like mm -hmm. tight, right? So this comes down to a point. Back to a 40, just to edge it out. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna yep. shave her belly with a 10. Right up to about her navel area. It's okay, baby. Stand still. Yeah. Are you dancing? Are you dancing? Get her good and clean in here. How far did you say you come up to about the, the belly button? Yeah. Yeah. So when I cut nails, I do them a little different. Should have saved so you, one. So you do pre-trim a little bit and then do the grinding. I think that's smart. It's less and to grind. The right? angle that I trim my nails at is different than most groomers. Okay. Especially like with her, she has long quicks. So usually when I trim nails, I trim at this angle. I'll start the nail cut her here mm -hmm. and angle back this way I and see. leave a sharp point underneath and I've already trimmed it so I don't want to take too much off. Yeah, I get it. But I go at this angle okay, and that way when I file from underneath, I round it up this way. Ah, uh, then you come up from the underneath. Mm-hmm. And then it takes it a lot shorter without quicking the nail. Yeah. Because the quick grows this way. So when I cut it, I cut over the quick. I start the nail trimmer here. Oh, I see. Here, You're avoiding it. And I go this way yeah. and take off the hard shell on the upper part of the nail. Then the underside of the nail is soft and crumbly. Yeah. So when you go to dremel it, you ground up from the bottom. That makes sense. And you completely shorten and smooth it. So it'll look like a hard, sharp hook going down. Right. And then you, you dremel it coming up this way, and then it shortens the nail, and you don't hit the quick at all. I've got that is some good stuff right there. I'm going to have to try that. I have gotten to where I don't ever, ever quick a nail. So, we're going to change her underline because I haven't been grooming her. Okay. So, it looks like it's going a little too far back. And this is a mistake a lot of people make on a lot of dogs is they go too far back in the flank here. Okay. So, we're going to change this. The way you're putting like the tuck up? Yeah. Okay. 
So I use a 40 blade when I do this. Oh boy, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> and I come in on the flank. And if you're not experienced with clippers, yeah. you want to be very careful on coming in on the flank. That's that loose skin right there mm -hmm. that connects. So I'm going to make a little bit of a cut in here so that her tuck up actually looks higher than it is. Wow, that's a trick right there, guys. This is a definitely a, a, a show grooming trick uh, or competition grooming trick. Most of us uh, grooming Bedlingtons in our salon, we may not you know, go to the extent to, to pay attention to these details, but it really makes a difference if you do. Yeah, because you can see her skin hanging down here. Mm -hmm. And visually, when you're up away from the dog, you see this instead of this. Her high point under here is here. The high point of her back should be here. So you want your high point underneath to match your high point up high. So we're going to move it up here. And I keep going back and forth because I'm having a super light touch around this flank. Yeah. You're, you're I'm drawing clean. it in. Okay, so the head on a European Bedlington, it comes like this and it kind of comes back further than the skull and rounds under. Oh. And then it's an almost shaved neck. Wow. It's completely different. Okay. That's how they show them over there. I always start with the top line on just about everything. And I do a lot of combing. Yeah. A lot, a lot of combing. And you said you're using a very fine comb. This is the Yusumi, mm -hmm. very fine tooth comb. And you can see, if you look in my camera over here, see the line yeah. In her hair. Yes. Anything that touches, see the comb oh. lines, anything that touches their hair, watch. It leaves, wow. a, it leaves a print. It's a major difficulty factor here with this coat. Many of my <laughs> clients, you know, when they're picky about their dogs, like when they pick them up, they're yeah. like, don't touch them. Uh huh. I want to see it all beautiful. Yeah, right. They're like, don't put any handprints in my oh, dog. Oh my <laughs> gosh. All right. So I start up over the tail and there's people out there that are much better than me at this and that are breed experts i'm a pet groomer and this is a pet dog so mm -hmm. if there are any discrepancies in how people do it you know you're welcome to share <laughs> yeah of course so i'm angling up towards the high point on the back angling up okay are those shears cutting okay they are these are amy shears Wow, and this is the straight. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that micro serrated edge? It's grabby, isn't I it? I do, and that's what's really nice for this coat type. Yeah, that's very so, grabby. As I hit the high point up over the loin here, mm -hmm. I'm gonna start going a little straight. And now I'm gonna start dropping down towards the neck. Oh. So you're angling down, you're taking more coat there, right? Yeah, I have another video out on her that shows her in her short clippered trim. Oh, okay. So she's just... actually been growing some hair so she can get a proper trim. Well, that was nice of them to do that for us. It was very nice. <laughs> are they watching? They are. Oh. And they drove up from South Florida to get this done. I know you said they had a four hour drive. Yep, something Jeez. like that. So, so when I scissor, I set the whole outline of the dog. I don't try to finish any one area. Okay. Then I'll start to bring it all together and then I'll finish it. Cool. So. Can't wait to see it all. I drop together. the head down. I start where I want the high point of the head, which is right above the ears. I start there and I go back into this low part, kind of straight. Huh. And when I bring the neck up. Oh, it's nice and sharp. Look at that line. That way I don't end up with a chopped in dip here. Yeah. By doing it this way, I get this smooth transition, yeah. transition into the short part on the shoulders. And then I come straight up so that we have that sharp point. 
I actually want this rounded, but when I first started, I do it sharp. Yeah, then you'll round it in and shape it. Take mm -hmm. much once you start setting in that outline. It really starts taking shape. Because we want straight, they're slab sided braid. I'm gonna go straight up into this top knot, really tight. Because remember, a lot of the people will tend to use a blade in there. Yeah, you said they would choose to do like a seven or a five? Yeah, and see, she's got hair here. I'm going to bring this oh, ear up. Oh, just clean all that off. And I don't take a 40 up in this over part of the ear. I'm using a 10 against because then she would clip or burn or scratch. Okay. So I did a 40 from right about where it starts to build out here down. Uh huh. But when I want to get into the bulb of the ear here or behind the ear, I want a 10. And I would do that even with a show dog because. You don't want them irritated right yeah. before they go in the show ring. And you actually want a little high on this ear because you have a really narrow head. All this is going to get scissored right in. Yeah. So, so those you've ears... got to have this clipper work up high. If you don't, your head's not going to be narrow enough. Very <laughs> unique looking um, trim on this breed, that's for sure. And believe uh, it or not, there's reasons for every trim. Well, you know. you're accentuating what the dog was originally bred to do, and these were the best Bradger dogs there ever were. So that makes sense of having this all clean, because they're going in holes after vermin. Right? They're killing little vermin. And the, the build of the dog is narrow enough to get down in the hole, and the S shape of the dog means they can kind of squiggle down in there. Wiggle in there. Oh. So I'm going almost to the skin here, as you can see. And these scissors are cutting through this hair like butter. That's good. I'm very glad to see uh, how they perform on this. Cause this is a tough coat. It's a very tough coat. If your scissors aren't super sharp, the hair will just fold Bend. in it. Yeah. I hold my scissors wrong. <laughs> I'm sure I do too. <laughs> I do my third finger. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. What, is it just it feels better to you? No, I use my whole hand when I scissor. Wow. When you do your ring finger, you go like this and you use your thumb. Yes. That bothers my tendons. Okay. Yeah, when I do my third finger, I use this finger to balance here and I use my whole hand opens and shuts. You know what? It's whatever works. Exactly. So this is why they use the sevens, because you get almost really to the skin cool. there. Yeah. Here I go straight up. I don't angle in. Okay. A lot of people tend to angle in, and when you do, you cut off a lot of hair you need. So I'm going straight up. Because I want a slab-sided breed, I don't want roundness. Yeah. But I do that with my poodles and my Bichons. I go straight up too. Well, they are supposed to look a little squared off in the rear a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Will you usually use a chunker or a blender to, to uh, um, smooth your, to smooth things out at all? Or? Sometimes. I'm so used to using straights yeah. that blenders are an afterthought. Yeah, I, and I think that's normal. You know, For a while, I wasn't using Curve just because I didn't really have one that I liked so well. So I just was 
using my straights for everything and a lot of people would ask why don't you use the curves don't you like them and I said no I really do like them it's just that I just don't have a pair that I really like right now and so I just don't use them but I love the curves in my line I love it better than the straight I use it almost all the time instead of the straight it's okay honey Good girl. So now I'm going to drop this down to the elbow. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. Very very accentuated. So this is all just part still of getting the shape right. We've cut a lot of hair off already. Yeah. There's a lot of hair on the table. Now, even to be show groomed, these dogs are it's said that their hair shouldn't be more than an inch long. I mean, you got your high points that might be a yeah. little longer, but correctly done, they're supposed to be about an inch long. I'm not going to take much off her legs because she doesn't need much. Yeah, you only take what you need to, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm just going to comb this off to the side a bit. Oh, well, this is the fun part. Stay. I like watching this. You're fine. She's like, don't touch my tail. They get sensitive with that tail. There's a lot of nerve endings. You know, it's like an extension of their, we were just talking about that in the members stream last night. Yes, yeah, their spine. Yeah. So this is still real short. Yeah, but just scissored in real tight there where mm -hmm. the clipper work and the scissor work come together. Mm-hmm. Now go back in there with a 40 and edge it out again. All right, so we're going to scissor in a little bit of angulation. So I'm using my curves backwards. Yeah. Where about is the, is this like anywhere with the, in, in line with the bend of stifle is where the, the, tightest point is or well if we want to be technical I usually just tend to guess at it but you don't have time to get technical yes we have time to get technical <laughs> it's important it is important we are learning if you're a groomer you should always have a AKC complete dog yes book yes so that you can know your breed standards for the hawks legs and feet they should be muscular. The hind legs are longer than the forelegs, which are straight and wider apart at the chest than at the feet. Slight bend to the pasterns, which are long and sloping without weakness. Stifles well angulated. Hawks strong and well let down. Turning neither in or out. Long hair feet with thick, well closed up, smooth pads. Do claws removed. So okay. what you were asking, where should the hawks be? Yeah. The hawks are well let down which means okay. your hawk is down Hawks low. Hawks are well let down. I have a Kerry Blue Terrier, mm -hmm. and we used to show her. So when you want your hawks to be well let down, your hawk is here, you want to accentuate that. So you're going okay. all the way down. Hawk uh, stifles well yeah. bent, so you want to put tight angulation. So when I put tight angulation, it's almost where you can see the leg through the back. Yeah, it's real close to the skin. It's coming in tight. And that way, when I go to finish her, I'll accentuate it from this angle so that we can see from a distance that we have well let down hocks. But you gotta be careful if you're being technical about your work. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take any of the hair from this side or this side when you're taking this. Okay. A lot of people will tend to take their scissor like this and yeah. see how much hair you cut off. Yes. And you're saying, no, you don't want mm -mm. it. You want to do it just from the back. So I'll go like this okay. with my shears flat kind of in the middle. So you know you're not getting into any of that side, that hair on the side. Of the right. Legs. You want to get it, but when the time is appropriate. Yeah, when you're over there scissoring and you want that to be straight, you said you want a straight line on the outside of the leg. So now if you look in the mirror over there, you can see a well-bent stifle with a well let down hawk. Yeah. So from a distance, see the underline coming to the elbow. That's where it should meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And those lines, it's all just flowing together. Exactly. So when you do that right, and any time as a groomer when you have questions about where does this go, where does that go, your standard of the breed is what pulls that together mm -hmm. for you. You've got to read it. you got to read the breed standards. And see how it's more going straight down. Yes. Well let down, hot well let down. low down. We're gonna go straight up. And we're gonna follow all the way down the side, straight up and down, short. And for people working on their scissoring, keeping your arm still and following through and moving at your waist so you can see my body's really still, my scissors are really flat, and all my bending is coming from my waist Yeah. to follow down. Boy, one false move on this coat, you would have some, some issues. Absolutely. Especially as short as it is. You don't have yeah. anything to fix. No, it's tight. You can't, there's nothing to work with to fix it if you mess it up. hip then we're going to outline our face and then we'll start scissoring for real for real <laughs> <laughs> well like i this said this is just this ain't for real guys we're just playing games here <laughs> <laughs> we're just cutting in shape <laughs> we're still outlining well kind of now you're past the outlining point so now we're going to set this underline on this side on the other side it came that way mm -hmm. because i'm at the front of the dog i can come this way it doesn't have to be a hard, fast rule. But it sets from that tuck up to the top of the elbow. Mm -hmm. See, I'll actually start cutting in a little bit higher here. Yeah. Wow, she looks stunning. And you want to picture where the last rib is and then you're starting to angle down towards the back leg. So that where that last rib is, is kind of where your highest point of your tuck up. Mm -hmm. And right in here, you can do a little windshield wiper thing. Mm -hmm. That is a groomer technical term, by the way, windshield okay. wiper thing. <laughs> it's, it's technical. Yeah, it is. It's a windshield <laughs> wiper thing. I learned it from Lindsay Dickin. <laughs> We Watching one of her videos, oh. she does a windshield wiper. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of go back and forth. Yeah. But you're doing it at an angle, so you're coming in on the flank, so it's a little more natural. It, it ties them to, it ties it together with the, the leg coming into that tuck up. So now I can round this off just a hair where I did my straight. Where you came straight up, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you're just sort of taken off that hard edge. All right, so now we're gonna play with the head. We wanna take this straight. As tight in as you can. Such a cool trim. It really is. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. And once people know you know how to do them, they come out of the woodwork. Well, I bet. It sounds like those shears are getting a little bit. If they can cut a bedlington, they can cut anything. That's good to know. All right. When I get around the lips, I'm gonna switch to a smaller shear. Mm-hmm. A little more tedious. And the edge of the ears. 
So when you're looking at a Bedlington, you shouldn't be able to see their eyes from the front. She is cut in a little bit over her eyes mm -hmm. in here already. So we won't get the total full face, but it's pretty good. When you're looking at them dead on, you mm -hmm. don't want to see eyes. I wonder if my hubby's watching. Hubby, if you are, I think this might be our next breed. <laughs> he will never understand. He'll say, why would you want a dog that looks like a lamb? Because you need one for the school play to, with baby Jesus. That's you know? right. <laughs> and That's the shepherds. right. It's a lot easier to have a dog play the sheep than a, than a lamb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so you... So I'm going right up to the lips. Wow, yeah. It's very tight. I don't want to cut her. That would be bad. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. <laughs> Hey, this is dangerous business what we do here. It it's, is. This is serious. Sharp tools. They're yeah, very sharp. We get hurt too. I cut myself the other day, see? Yeah. <laughs> and they hurt. Those little ones, those little slices, they These hurt. scissors are like razor blades, yeah, this particular one. They really are. One. Is that, which one is that? Those These are Jaguar Gold. Ooh. Yeah, and you need it real sharp to be very precise. So as I get a little closer in there, I'm just going to take the 40 blade rather than the scissors. Mm -hmm. Now that I can see where I'm going, I'm just going to carve it out. It's a little safer. Mm -hmm. Now the dog coming in at Two, I've never met before. Oh. I'm hoping she's not matted. What kind of dog is it? I think it's a Maltese Poodle. Okay. And he just moved here from Chicago. Oh. And he said his breeder or his groomer in Chicago did her in a Bedlington trim and said to find somebody that knows how to do Bedlington. Wow, and that's how he found you. So, so I don't know if he's matted or yeah. anything. Did, what did he say? When was the last time the dog was he groomed? Didn't. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. That's but not like, a good thing. I'm like, heck, a Bedlington, we can do that today. Sure, I'll take, because I wasn't taking new clients, but I'm like, okay, I'll you take want it. it. You're like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll work it. I'll work a long Sunday for that one. I figured it'd play right into what we're doing. Well, it did. Let's just hope, like you said, let's hope it's not a, a poor little clip down in the making. So this should be kind of blended, mm -hmm. not like super sharp line. It's sharp because of the clipper work. Yeah. But it's not. But you the, you come right in tight on the, the the difference from the clipper work to the scissor work. Yeah. And I am taking her eyelashes shorter because you can see they're all messy and curling down over the eye. So that it, sh it shows. You see them. Well, I don't want her eye to have eyelashes rubbing in it. Yeah because they curl down. So don't want that trimming to mess up the hair. So I was real careful not to cut in, mm -hmm. just to take out that little hair that was going into her eyes. Let me edge out her ears. So when I edge ears, because I get right down on the ear, I put my finger here and my thumb here, mm -hmm. and I rest my finger, my scissors on my finger, so mm -hmm. I can follow down. Gives yourself a nice little secure landing mm -hmm. for the bottom of your shear. Exactly, more control. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is where, this is the part where we all hold our breath. We're like, thank God we're not scissoring that close on the ear, right? <laughs> I used to dread that. But I love edging ears now. I think any time I overcome, over the years, any time you overcome something that you, you really were nervous about, it, it becomes one of your favorite things then. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you want to be sure it's nice and clean. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. The ears, I don't like to go past the tip of the nose. Okay. Otherwise, the tassels get too long and they look like poodles. Yeah, that makes sense. So I just measure it out. Mm -hmm. And you can't go wrong because whichever length a dog's head is, you know, it's going to be right It'll for them. be balanced. So clean, those ears. We're going to go straight up off the ear. I'm combing the hair back mm -hmm. and up. So you don't want this hair any wider than the face itself. Like it's right to the skull. Yeah. And that's a problem a lot of people have is they leave too much poof. It's built out too much. Yeah. And then it looks poodly. Mm-hmm. And it is supposed to look kind of like a mallet, I guess, huh? Yeah, that's a good description. All right. Let's clean off our table. They're tighter on the sides and angled towards the front a little bit instead of round. Yeah. Do you have a knot in there? <laughs> She's really, I like her a lot. She's a great dog. She's a sweetheart. All right, so now we're going to do this one. Four feet. So when you get into more technical grooming, just like more technical videos, yeah, it's it's a whole new challenge. I'm just gonna set the pasterns with these little scissors, and then we'll go back to the big scissors. So she doesn't have a whole lot of legs hair on her legs to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I can't do a whole lot with it, but the pasterns are supposed to angle back like this. Okay. Instead of the leg coming straight down, doing a pillar foot, yeah. you have a bend. Like most dogs you'll see me do, I drop straight down to the toe. Uh huh. These are bent in a little bit here oh. above the foot. So you can actually see that bend of foot. Let's start scissoring. Now we have the shape cut in. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to start scissoring. She still has a little too much hair up front and a little too much hair here. It's okay, baby. She's a little nervous. I keep sticking this camera in her face. I don't think that makes her feel comfortable. So with this coat, I typically will comb it up and check it to see if there's any lines. Mm -hmm. And I'll comb it down rather than straight out. Because mm -hmm. usually you can't see the lines until you comb it like down. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I wish they could feel this coat. And I, I've never felt a Bedlington's coat before. Uh, it's not what I mean. It's not even what I expected. Well, if you look it's up softer. close to it, it stands out because you see these guard hairs. Oh yes. They've got firm guard hairs sprinkled all throughout. Oh wow. That's why it stands up. Yeah. But other than that, it's really, really soft and it yeah. gets really staticky, really easy. Yeah, it would. Why not? And they change colors a couple times a year. Do they really? They get lighter and darker, darker yeah. different depending they're, on the season? When their guard hairs are coming out, they're darker. 
oh. and then they'll lighten out. <laughs> and one of the first Bedlington Terrier females behind all these dogs, she was very well known. She had a light head and a dark body. And every now and then you'll see one like her. Maybe it's part of her gene pool. Mm-hmm. Because they all go back to her. Wow. And when you're scissoring up under here, you got to be careful. This tail is always tucked right up I in there. I saw that earlier. They and, really tuck that tail up And you can them. nip that tail because she pulls it right up on her belly. Yeah. And you can, you can It's easy to catch, nick it. Yeah, you can catch that tail, so you want to be careful. Now when we're going to do this rear where we want the angulation, normally we have a little more hair built in the front of the leg up into the last rib. So I don't want to take it in too tight because then her legs will be too skinny. Okay. But I'll start angling this angulation this way. So my scissors are at this angle. That way I can keep the leg looking wide. Mm -hmm. But you'll be able to see extreme angulation. Like if you're looking from a distance yeah. at the mirror, you'll be able to see. So I'm going to do this all the way down. And the reason why I do this is so that if you're standing here, you can see angulation. Standing here, you see angulation. If you're standing over there, you see the angulation. No matter where you're standing, mm -hmm. yeah. you'll see the bend. Stand. This is still a bit too high. So I'm going to take it this way. Take it on down. So we can have our low hocks. So now we have a well bent stifle and low hocks. Hmm. So you guys, Amy's shears are wonderful, aren't they? I'm glad that they're working good for you on this coat. Looks great. When I go to do the final scissoring, I will spray her with conditioner again. Mm -hmm. So now I want to pull this. This isn't quite sharp enough, so I'm going to pull this up in further so we get right up so that high point's right over that ear. The highest point of the little top knot is mm -hmm. right over the ear? Yeah. Over the front of the ear. Okay. Oh, I Not see it. Back. I do see it, yeah. And it's hard to get this blended under and not create a barrel chest. Yes. So it's very slight. Wow. Very flat. That's and we've got a lot of hair on the floor. Yes, there is. <laughs> Considering she was not overgrown at all, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, it's amazing. She's like, can I take a nap now? Oh, you get to sleep the whole way home, honey. And she right. probably will. So, do this leg. Now, you can see how much more hair here is here, even though we already cut in the angulation than here. And that's why you take these scissors. Sideways. And kind of angle it right up in like this so that we can see that. Another detail about Bedlingtons is they should be longer than they are tall. Mm. Not much. So that's from breastbone to, mm -hmm. to point of rump? Yeah, so you don't want to take them in super flat and ruin that. to do from this angle. Because I want to see where I'm going. I can't do this this way. <laughs> it's harder to video this stuff than you think, guys. It is. It really is. Because we're always in your way. I know. And then we try to position ourselves and then it's uncomfortable yeah and then we look like we don't know what we're doing i'm like well look how she's holding her scissors it's like i'm just doing that so i'm not in the way of the shot 
So oh this hawk God. is still a little high when you comb all this hair back. So I'm going to drop that down and swing it out. Hmm. And I know a lot of your videos are for beginner groomers. Yeah. And sometimes I get a little more technical. Yeah. But well, you're you do more um, breed standard characteristics in your trimming than I do. Because um, you get you get you get clients that bring you dogs that are in better shape than some of the the dogs that I nobody takes care of their dogs that I groom like in between grooms some of them do. I have just been really hard about it. Yeah, I got so tired of it that I just laid down the law. <laughs> yeah, but I'm it's... in a big town where we can yeah. have enough pool of dogs to where I can do that. Right. And I've got clients who've been with me like 30 years. Most of my clients have all been with me for the longest time too. And a lot of my dogs are older now, so we're definitely modifying the trims. It'll be easier for them. Let's do in between the front legs. Because we want it wider at the top than at the bottom and we want the chest nice and deep, We're actually going to cut in tight here and here. Make it drop down a little bit. Good girl. Put your foot down. Good girl. It's a good puppy. You want this little piece to drop down in the middle hmm. so that it looks wider in there and the chest looks deeper. Okay. I'm just kind of carving that out. When you do a carry blue, you have to do their legs so that they swing like a pendulum when they're moving. So you have Carrie to carry blues look so amazing when they're moving, you know, in that trim. Aren't they gorgeous? Yes. I had to buy one to groom one. <laughs> I never got to groom I, one, so I, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just going to buy one. <laughs> it's one way to fix that problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was 30 years ago, and I still have one in my house. Oh, so you've had two? Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, this head doesn't have the exact shape it should, but it's pretty close because it didn't have enough up front here. And then I'll round off this crest. Some people keep it really sharp. I like it a bit more natural, personally. A little more round mm -hmm. back there. I don't like that sharp. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Line. It looks fake, and I like dogs to look natural. Yeah. That's why I don't do a lot of the coloring and stuff. I just, I prefer a natural dog. Yeah, I like, I, I, I like it too. I like, I like the natural coat, natural look. I don't like to use a lot of product. So now we've got the second scissor over done. And if the other customer shows up, she's good enough to go. Mm -hmm. but, but you can then the third one fine is kind tuning of, and fine yeah. tuning. Okay, so now when I'm going to check the coat to see if it's even, I'm gonna start combing down. Oh. And okay. as you see, I only do this on certain coats. But as you see, I comb it down and out. See this little bit of lines you're starting to see? Yeah. Where it looks so good. A little good. bit. So that's what you're focusing on now. Mm-hmm. Because it looked so good when it was all combed yeah. up. Yeah. But you now. You see it. Mm-mm. So you can see like one here. And here you can see lines. Little, little bit. And because I'm not taking her as short as you would sometimes see, if you really want to accentuate the clipper work, you can use like a little bit of an oily spray. Oh, and it makes it stand out. And really. It, does it darken it? Is that why? Yeah, it makes it kind of 
all that hair just disappear. Oh, yeah. And then That's for a show, they chalk them. So they'll actually chalk the ears and stuff so those so castles really go pop. Pff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So there's a bunch of fun things you can do when you want to show your dog off. Like yeah. if you're having a Christmas party and you really want your dog to look fabulous. That's true. There's little things you can do. Yeah. Hey, if we have a minute, we could go take a picture of her for her owners. So now we're going to take this side and check it. It's okay, I'm baby. Come over here. So I'm already seeing the lines. Well, not too bad. There's some. It doesn't really show up on camera too well, believe it or not. I can see them a little bit, but it doesn't show up as well on camera. Well, I suppose that's good. Yeah. See, my work always looks better on camera that's than right. it does in person. <laughs> No, actually, I'm looking it looks at it really like... good in person. <laughs> all right, so now I can go around all the edges and tidy up the clipper work. So you can see here how this side drops down. It's not going in under the elbow. It's kind of flat, slab yeah. side. Yeah, and you can see it from this angle. Their rear is supposed to look powerful. So that's why we take it so tight in here, huh? And bring it out wide enough and keep enough hair on either side of the leg so it looks strong. Babe. All right, Layla. There's Layla. <laughs> she did. She is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, she. Oh, give Dad some love. Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer and on that channel I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry. One that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome.